Hi, my name is Renata. I am a surface designer and I use Photoshop for my art every day. So I thought it would be interesting to put together some tutorials about this program. In this video, I would like to provide you some basic knowledge about layers in Photoshop. And I made this as beginner friendly and as detailed as I could and I hope it helps you. Okay, now first of all, we are going to make a new file so we can practice. You can find this button new file here, click on it. I am going to choose this A4 um, paper size. Uh, you choose whatever you want. Now the resolution and the size doesn't really matter because we are just practicing. Uh, click create here. What are layers? So basically layers are like separate sheet of papers you can work on. You can use just one layer or you can use hundreds of them. It's really up to you and your workflow. You can find the layers panel on the right side of the program here. And if you don't like it here, you want to put it elsewhere, you can just drag and drop it and move it where you want to. And you can adjust the size of the panel as well, like this. I do like it on the right side here, so I will just put it back. To make a new layer, you just need to press this plus button here on the right side. But you can also use keyboard shortcuts for it. On Windows, press Ctrl, Shift and N. Then press OK or Enter on your keyboard. And if you have a Mac, instead of Ctrl, always press Command on your keyboard. If you want to delete a layer, just click on the layer you want to delete and click on this trash icon or just press delete on your keyboard. Okay, before we going further, uh, I am going to draw two different shapes on two different layers. I am going to use the brush tool for that. You can find it on the left side. It looks like this. Just click on it and you will have a brush. You can also access the brushes on the right side here. You can see here all of your brushes available. If you cannot see the brushes panel on the right side, go to Window, find the brushes and click on it. And it will be here. Or you can use a keyboard shortcut for it, which is B. If you want to change any keyboard shortcut, you go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcut. And here you can see everything that can have a keyboard shortcut. If you want to change something, just click on this part and write another letter. Then accept and OK. Now you need to pick a color. You can do it on this color panel. I think this green will be fine for me. OK, now I am going to draw a rectangle. OK, it's not the prettiest, but it will work. I will erase some of it. To use the eraser tool, just press E on your keyboard. Now make another layer, choose another color and draw another shape. If you don't feel like drawing now, you can use the shape tool for that. It's on the left side. It looks like this. If you click on right with your mouse, you can see all the shapes you can access easily. Then press on the layer and move your mouse and you can have a shape. After this, press enter. I'm not going to need that now, so I will just delete this layer. But if I want that layer back with the shape, I can press Ctrl and Z, which is the shortcut for undo. 
So if you realize you want something back that you already deleted, you have a chance for that. Okay, so now let's look at this layer panel. I will make it bigger. Okay, so we have two layers. And let's say you don't want to see this rectangle here. So you can push this eye on it and the program will hide it from you. You still have the layer, you just cannot see it. And you can bring it back as easily as like that. Like the panels here, you can also just click and drag the layers as well in its own panel. You can also group the layers, just click on one layer, then press Ctrl. And press Ctrl G or click on here. And when I press the I, then it affects both the layers because they are in the same group. So now these two shapes are on different layers, but if you want them on one layer, you can merge the layers. So click on the layer 2 and then press Ctrl and then layer 3. And you can press Ctrl E. As a shortcut, it will match for you. Or click right on your mouse and then match layers. And it will have the same effect. You can also easily match every layers in a certain group. Just click on the group and then do the same as we did previously. Okay, so if you want to move something on your layer, you need the move tool, which you can find here on the left side. Click on it. And then you can move anything on layer two if you click on this rectangle. If there would be a second rectangle on this layer, you could move that too. The move tool is also good for easily selecting a layer you want to work on. Now I am on layer 2, but I want to work on layer 3. So I can just click on this triangle with the move tool and it will select the layer for me. And I don't need to select it on this panel, which is very useful if you have like 100 layers and you just cannot find it. What if I want to move just one rectangle, this little one, and not uh, the whole layer? For this, you have to select um, separately this part. You can use the lasso tool for that. You can find the lasso tool on the left side here. Click on this. Press on the canvas and make a selection around the shape. Press Ctrl and T, Command and T on a Mac. And now you are on the free transform tool and you can move this selected area. If you are satisfied, just press Enter or click on this check. You can also access the free transform tool by clicking right on your mouse and select free transform. Click right on your mouse again. And you can see a lot of options that you can do with this selection. Like you can copy this little rectangle onto another layer or you can cut it from this layer too and put it on the other one. Like this is the copy. So if you hide it, you see that you still have this base on the layer 2. But um, select layer via cut and it will cut it from the layer 2 and it will put it on a different layer. This.
You can also select part of the shapes with this um, lasso tool. The lasso tool has three options. This is the basic one. This follows um, your hand. There is also the polygonal lasso tool, which always makes a straight line. And there is the magnetic lasso tool. It follows the edge of the shape. When something is selected like this, you can only work on this selected part. For example, if I want to draw something on this layer, I can only draw on this selected part. like this. You can also inverse this selection. Go to select and inverse or use this shortcut. And now I can draw anywhere on this layer except this rectangle. You can deselect three ways. One is click right on your mouse and press deselect. Or go to select on the top and press deselect here. Or use the Ctrl plus D shortcut, which is Command and D on the Mac. So as you can see, the layers have a hierarchy between them. The rectangle is under the triangle. So if I move it under the triangle, it will hide. But if I want the triangle to be at the bottom, I can just bring it down. So let's say I want to duplicate the layers. There are a few ways to do it. First, you can right click on your mouse on the layer you want to duplicate. And you can find duplicate layer here. Press OK. It will duplicate uh, every element on that layer at the same place that the base layer are. You can also use shortcuts for it. So click on the layer you want to duplicate. Let's say I want to duplicate the layer two. And now press Ctrl J. It will also duplicate everything what's on the layer at the same place. But if you duplicate it with the shortcut Ctrl C, then press Ctrl V. It will also duplicate everything once on the layer, but it will place it at the middle of the canvas. You can, of course, also duplicate groups. If you delete a group, the program will ask you if you want the group and the contents or the group only. If you press the group and the contents, it uh, will delete every layer within the group. But if you press group only, it will save you the layers. They just won't be in the same group. There will be no group. You can rename a layer or a group by clicking on them twice. Write something in it and enter. So you already know how to hide a layer, but you can also lock a layer as well. If you want to lock a layer fully, you can press this lock icon on it. Now this triangle layer is fully locked, so I cannot interact with the layer.
You can also lock the image pixels with this brush. This way you can interact with the elements on the layer except the brush tool. So you can move it, transform it, use filter on it, anything you want except you cannot use the brush tool on it. If you want to unlock a layer, just click on this lock and it will disappear. You can also lock the position of the elements on the layer. So you can draw on it and anything, you just cannot move it. And my favorite one is this lock which locks the transparent pixels that are already on this layer. So this way, if I want to draw something, it will be only visible on this rectangle. Now I'm going to show you how clipping mask works. A clipping mask is a layer to which a mask is applied and the clipped layer is only visible within the boundaries of the base layer. So let me show you what I mean by this. Make a new layer above the triangle. So the clipping mask layer is always above the base layer and my base layer is this triangle. To make this layer when a clipping mask, click on it, hold down Alt and position your mouse between these two layers and you can see this arrow and click. And now you have a clipping mask. You can also do this by clicking on the right on your mouse and click on create clipping mask. I have the base layer, I have the clipping mask, which means if I do anything on this clipping mask layer, it will only affect the base layer. Like I can draw on it or put a picture on it or anything you want basically. Be aware that if you want to move this triangle, move the clipping mask as well with it because if this move, the clipping mask won't move, it will be staying there. So move it together. If you want another clipping mask to be attached to the base layer, you just need to click on the base layer and make a new layer. And if it's a, under the first clipping mask, it will automatically be another clipping mask. But if I'm going to click on this one and now make a new layer, it won't be a clipping mask automatically. But I can drag it here and it became a clipping mask. Like we did previously, you can also match clipping mask as well. Select the clipping masks and match layers. You can release a clipping mask by hold down Alt and click again between the two layers. Or click right on your mouse and release clipping mask. And this will have the same effect. You can use clipping mask for groups too. Now I am going to talk a little bit about layer masks, which is kind of similar to the clipping mask in some point. A layer mask allows you to hide parts of your image and then bring them back at any time. You can find the layer mask icon here on this right side. Click on this layer with the triangle and then click on the layer mask and click on this part of the layer. So this is your mask here, this white area, currently white. So on a layer mask, you can use white or black. On a layer mask, white makes things visible and black makes things invisible. Choose black 
and paint something on this triangle. So as you can see where we used black it became invisible on the triangle but you can still see this black area on the thumbnail of the mask. So it's not equal to erasing something, it's just like you masked it, you hide it and you can get it back because if I choose white and paint over it you can see it again. So what if I make a selection on this rectangle and add a layer mask? I will select this circle on the rectangle and press the layer mask. So now only this circle will be white and visible and the other part of the layer will be black. And if you make a clipping mask to this rectangle, can only work on this circle. So go to the layer mask, choose white and now you can extend the circle. The layer mask is not permanent, you can delete it anytime you want. Click on the thumbnail of the layer mask, press delete and if you want to keep it as a circle, press apply. And if you would like to keep it as a rectangle, just press delete. And it will take you back um, before the mask has been applied to the layer. You can also apply layer mask to groups as well. So I would like to see only this part of these two shapes. And now I have it. So keep in mind if you draw on this layer a rectangle and then you delete the layer mask on the group, you will still have these additional marks that you just made. You are just able to see the whole shape that are not affected anymore by the mask. Okay, so what if you have a certain shape that you want to select and apply as a layer mask to a layer? For example, I have this triangle over this rectangle and I would like this shape to be shown only. Go here over the thumbnail of the triangle shape Press Ctrl, click on it. Now go to the rectangle and add the layer mask. So let's see what else you can do in this layer panel. For example, you can find the blending modes here. Blending modes control how pixels in the image are affected by a painting or editing tool. So let's choose um, color touch for example. Press enter and move the rectangle over the triangle. And you can see that it became a different color and how different it behaves on the triangle. Okay, now I'm going to make a colorful background. So previously we had this rectangle green, but now we have it like blue because we used color dodge as a blending mode. So it's not only affect this rectangle layer, but it also affect the triangle if I put it over there. See, it makes it yellow. I think blending modes are quite useful when you are shading or uh, adding light to your illustration or something like that. I really like it and I advise to have fun with it and, you know, experiment. You can also add a blending mode to a layer in a different way. Just click on this thumbnail twice 
and you can choose blending mode here. And you can see all of these options that are available. So let's say we want to give this rectangle some effect. If you are satisfied, press OK. And you can see the shadow that you gave to the rectangle. And you also see the effects here. If you change your mind and realize you don't want this inner shadow, just press on this eye, which hide the effect. You can also change the opacity of a layer in this panel. You can find it here. And you can change it very easily. If you don't want to change the opacity here, you can also go to the layer you want to change, press V, and then write any number you want uh, under 100. And th this will automatically change the opacity. You see, it went to 76. So we looked through a lot of things what you can do with layers and I will show you a few other things quickly what you can add to a layer and how you can change it. But I'm not going to talk about them in depth now because I just wanted to give you some basic knowledge in this video. So similar to blending modes, there are adjustment layers that control how the pixel in the image are affected. The adjustment layers can be found here and there are a lot. So I advise you to try all of them out and see what you like. I will choose this hue saturation, for example. If you click on an adjustment layers, it will make a new layer for itself. So every layer below this adjustment layer will be affected unless you use it as a clipping mask. In that case, only the rectangle will be affected. So let's see what you can do with this hue per saturation. You can make adjustments on this properties panel, or you can find the adjustments here on the right side. So you can see the rectangle is changing. But because we have it as a clipping mask, it doesn't affect the triangle. But if I release this clipping mask, it will affect the triangle as well. The other thing I wanted to show you that there are a lot of filters you can use on a layer. You can find a filter on the top of this list. And every one of them has a different effect. And for example, you can make interesting shapes and effects. Like this became from the rectangle. So let's just say I very like the effect that this filter had on the rectangle and I want the same to the triangle. Select the triangle layer, go to filter, and you can see the zigzag here because this is the previous one I used. So click on it and it will have the same effect I used as the rectangle. So if you realize you don't like the effect that the filter did with these two shapes and you want it back, you can use the undo shortcut we discussed earlier, or you can go to the history panel and go back. This history panel has the same effect as the undo. You just see the name of the tools you used and other things. So there is another useful thing I want to show you, which is very great when you zoom in the layer. You can do it by pressing Ctrl and plus. So 
I'm going to work on this triangle why I'm zoomed in, but I also would like to see how it looks like on the whole canvas. And you can do it with the navigator tool, which is this icon here. So you can see close the triangle, but you can see the canvas like this. And if anything changes, you can see it here. You can also zoom in and out with this slider. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to change the size of your canvas. Go to image and you can see that you can change the image size and the canvas size. If you change the image size, it will change every element according to the change. So if you make it smaller, The rectangle and the triangle will be smaller as well. But if you choose the canvas size, the things you have on the layer will not change its size. You can also change the size with the crop tool. You can find it here. it will affect the size of the canvas. If you are satisfied, click here. So this is the end of this video. I believe I showed you everything I planned and I hope it helps if you are starting to use this program. Bye!